So, okay, we're, we're, go, we're going. Yes, yeah, it will be. It is now going to be recognised by the whole world. Okay, so karma. Uh, yes, it's a good point. So, the, you know, so does cancelling, will, how, how easy is it uh, to cancel beliefs and will everything be cancelled and can you live forever? if you uh, buy cancelling beliefs uh, for all eternity. Now it's true, um, in my experience, um, all my illnesses left within three to five years by cancelling the beliefs in them. However, um, how easy it is for certain things to go is based on karma. And some things may not have... Um, and the, the way I sort of see it is like, Karma. So uh, through uh, kinesiologic research, it comes into thing that past lives exist. Also, I'm a hypnotherapist, and you can hypnotize people and find out about their past lives through past life regression. So some of these things have very heavy karmic buildup over many lifetimes. So they they seem to be hard to shift. Um, and we'll be talking a little bit later about the anti-karma prayer as well. So, but also for me, um, many things happen. One of the things is that, generally speaking, as your level of consciousness increases through doing spiritual work, one thing is that you may no longer be bothered to let things go because the, you, you stop identifying with the body as self mm. and you start to connect to higher levels of consciousness and you start to see that there's a greater orchestration that this world and the meaning of this world which is purgatorial in nature uh, is for the is for transcending transcending limitation or, or i mean i would call it transcending duality well, let's say transcending uh, separation. All right, let's, let's, let's repeat what Buddha said. So, Buddha said that in order to let go of aging, suffering and death, you have to release all attachments. Then you'll, uh, then you'll realize the enlightened state and you'll be free forevermore of all the suffering of the identified limited ego state. So, or, uh, you know, you're letting go of all positionalities, all dualistic uh, position. So, as your consciousness level raises, like, you know, at a lower level of consciousness, I really want to get rid of get, uh, asthma, you know, because it's really, it's really bothersome having to take inhalers to breathe. So I just cancel that belief. But at that level, I'm quite limited, and I really want to get rid of the thing. But actually, when I, dis when I start to connect to these infinite fields, actually the, uh, the need to even, you no longer become affected. When you start to go into those infinite states, what happens in the body and what happens in the world doesn't affect you and then eventually doesn't affect you at all. When you are highly identified with the body and, and the thoughts, then you know, if someone steps on your toe or if someone runs over your dog, then it's like a very visceral, emotional uh, thing and there'll be, a vigor, there'll be a lot of pain and suffering involved in it. Once you start to go to the, those witnessing or eternal states, even if someone steps on your foot, or even if your dog gets, dog gets run over, that infinite field still stays there. And actually, as you go to these higher states of consciousness, the, the karmic unfolding of the world is seen to be perfect. And the need to cancel or save the body forever uh, seems to be less and less needed. Also, there's an acceptance, you know, there is now the unification with divine will. So the separate will that was wanting to get rid of, like, arthritis is starting to dissolve uh, in a number of parameters. E, it's not identified with the body any longer, and B, it's now one with the intuitive awareness, the omnipresence uh, and omnipotence of this universe being perfect in all its orchestrations, so that, if you like, those who are separated will get those perfect lessons, opportunities for transcendence, to transcend this, this world of perceived separation and suffering, to go into a world where, you know, maybe go into a heavenly realm of the, of the enlightened states. Now, if someone is initially doing, um, is quite reasonably new or moderately advanced in their spiritual work, and uh, let's say they've got, um, 
By the way, I mean, just because this is on YouTube, I'm not I'm not a medical profession, and and it, you know speak to your doctor and take medical advice. <laughs> so just have to quickly say that, but uh, don't do do always speak to do speak to your to your doctor and don't just rely on what I'm saying. Um, so, um, yeah, let me use a different example than the one I was going about to you. So if you had, like, um, asthma, and you're going, yes, I can cancel my belief in asthma, you may have a very high karma around that, a negative ka karmic load. And you may be wanting to get rid of that from a more uh, dualistic point of view, and just, mm -hmm. can I cancel it? And, and you might be cancelling it like, you know, you're, you're, for some years it still doesn't shift. Uh, and you say, well, it didn't work. I'm trying to get rid of it, and it hasn't gone. And that's because there's a, there can be a huge karmic load with that. And sometimes there's not enough time uh, to get rid of it, or that there's such a huge load, you wouldn't get rid of it in this lifetime anyway. So it needs to be said, well, you know, it's like if in this lifetime there's enough karmic permission, you know, it's not always guaranteed that, you know, in the next year I'll cancel it and it'll be gone. It might not, so it might be that you could say if the, you know as the soul gets incarnated in here, you could say karmically some of the things, even if you get to know them, you won't have the karmic permission to get rid of it in this lifetime. So even though you you, you know about it, it's not shifting, so you, know, you wouldn't have that karmic permission. But also, I mean, like Hawkins said, actually, as you do, as your consciousness raises, it doesn't matter whether it goes or not. You know, because you've now transcended to these more non-dual realms where you're now the observer of the body and the thoughts, or you're the witnesser, or you're the sky, you're not the cloud of the body and the thoughts any longer. So whether it topples over or whether the cancer leaves by cancelling it is not is immaterial, you see. So um, in that way, uh, but yes, yeah, so it's not like, you know, otherwise it, 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 you, it, one is missing an important piece if someone just hears about it and just starts to cancel in three months there, whatever isn't gone. And they're saying, are oh, they not doing it properly? Sometimes it won't always go. But in my experience, all my illnesses did leave. Uh, and, but it can be karmically that certain things wouldn't leave. But my thing is that, um, yeah, I think a lot of things will improve if you do it. Uh, and uh, that has been my experience. Does that answer the question? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So are you saying... Yeah. So are you saying, Sabiri, even with the anti-karma prayer, let's say, even in that case it would not work? Well, you know, okay. So what so, are you saying? Well, I'm saying, I'm saying, you know, my view is that, A, you've got to know what level of consciousness of the person who'd want to release something is. Because it's only at a lower level of consciousness identified level of consciousness or a level of separation that the need to remove something it thinks is suffering or affliction would be there would be that that uh, urge to do it okay like you know I'm, I'm suffering from asthma once you get to certain once your conscious level raises it may not it may be material or the desire to do that may drop away no, or, or even you might not even notice it, even when the body's having an asthma attack, because you're just not, you're not that. But, um, but on a, you know, there, there is like, let, let's say, like, um, the average, let, let's say approximately the average advanced spiritual seeker has had about 25 lifetimes on average, 25 lifetimes. So let's say, let's say, okay, let's say I've got back pain, and let, let's say, I was metaphorically stabbing people in the back for the last 20 lifetimes. You know, I was a real bad person. You know, I just really, like, you turned your back, I stabbed you and took your money. Mm -hmm. Right. And now I've got this awful back pain. And then someone tells me, but I've done this for 20 lifetimes. Yeah. And then someone tells me, oh, you know, you can cancel your belief in back pain. And I cancel my belief in back pain and it's gone within three years. And then you cancel your belief in back pain or do the anti-karma prayer. I pray, for, I pray for forgiveness for the one in me who stabbed people in the back in this lifetime and past lifetimes. That's the anti-karma prayer. Uh, I'll, I'll go on to that maybe in a second. I've got videos on that on my YouTube channel, the anti-karma prayer. But um, uh, you may not be able to, to burn off the karma in this lifetime. 
So it mightn't be, you know, your, you do it for a few years, but it seems to be a heavy one that's not shifting very easily. And that's because the, the karmic backlog mm. is, uh, <coughs> and where your level of consciousness is, and now accessing this tool, in this lifetime there wouldn't really be, you know, you can't get rid of it. You know, I've got like 20 lifetimes of being a backstabber. And it's like, I've got to, you know, I can, you know, I need to like release that guilt mm. and that identification, that strong identification through guilt and inflated mm. ego. So it's like, even though I'm doing the tools and it's clearing that stuff, it might not be enough. As your level of consciousness increases, it'll be easier and faster. But if you're at, say, a lower level of vibration, consciousness when you get access to these tools and you've done it for 20 lifetimes you might not be able to get it cleared mm. off in this lifetime you see mm. so it'll be like well I did it for three months and it still hasn't cleared you did it for three months and your back pain went what am I doing wrong mm. and then if you if I was to no, regre no, regress you with past life hypnosis and you were to see like in the last 20 lifetimes you just were like stabbing people in the back for 20 lifetimes and, I, and if I regressed myself with mm. past life, I only did it for one lifetime and I just cancelled it and it went in three months then you could see why it was harder to shift for this person than for me you see so you, you so with either kinesiologic research you can check did, did it happen in the past lifetime is it a huge karmic load so you could do that with muscle testing or you could see a past life hypnotherapist past life hypnotherapist all they do is they'll say, my problem is I have a pain in the back. Uh, maybe I might have stabbed people in the back in past lifetime. Can you do past life regression? They'll take you back and ask, you know, and they'll click their fingers, take you back through your lift to go back to the lifetime where the origination of that occurred. And then suddenly you'll be taken back to that lifetime and replay that. And you'll see yourself stabbing this guy in the back. And you, go, and you feel better. Oh, it's not, it's not unfair. Now I know the origins of why I've got mm. this incessant back pain. What can I... Sorry, go on. No, no, no. We're on you camera as well, if that's okay. Yeah. What, yeah. Where can, can I get um, that um, anti-karma premium? Is that in your book or somebody... I have several videos and uh, I, will, I will quickly share about it now. It's, it's very long? I'll do a quick five minutes, shall I? Oh, okay, quick five minutes. Anti-karma, no? Anti-karma, now, yeah. I'll just put this on and off. Yeah. 